So this is going to be an introduction to energy. And a lot of us, you know, we, we think we know what energy is. We'll, we'll, you know, use the word energy commonly, saying things like, oh, that kid running around screaming all over the place, he, he sure does have a lot of energy. Or we might say, oh, you know, I don't have any energy, so I can't do any of my schoolwork today. But this is just going to be the definition of energy from a scientific standpoint, plus a, a few principles. So the scientific definition of energy is the capacity to do work. And work is the action of a force through a distance. So when you ride your bike to school, you're doing work. Now, the total energy that an object has at any given time is the sum of, is the sum of its kinetic energy, which is the energy associated with motion, and its potential energy, which is the energy associated with position or composition. So in the following diagram I'm going to sort of illustrate um, kinetic and potential energy. So suppose I have an apple. This is an apple. And I'm holding it above the ground. So this is the ground. So I'm holding an apple above the ground. Due to Earth's gravitational field, the apple has an appreciable amount of potential energy associated with being held up above the ground. Now, when you release the barrier that's holding the apple and the apple is allowed to fall down, as the apple accelerates down towards the ground, the potential energy coming from when the apple was up here gets converted into kinetic energy as it falls. When the apple hits the ground, the energy given off is primarily in the form of thermal energy. Thermal energy is the energy associated with an object's temperature. So thermal energy is actually a type of kinetic energy uh, because the temperature of an object has to do with the motion of its atoms or molecules that make up the object. So the apple has potential energy. When it's released, it gets converted into kinetic energy. And it transfers thermal energy to the ground, which raises the temperature of the ground just a little bit. Now some of this energy associated with the apple falling down can be harnessed to do work. For instance, if I hook the apple up to a pulley and I allow it to fall, it could probably lift up a much smaller object and do work on it, moving it up. This is an ex example of how potential energy could be harnessed to do work. So, this leads to a very important principle about energy, which is called the Law of Conservation of Energy. Now, the Law of Conservation of Energy states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. So, one form of energy can be converted into another. For instance, in the case of the apple, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, but the total energy remains constant. Another important principle about energy is that systems with high potential energy tend to change in a way that lowers their potential energy. If we go back to our apple example, the apple in being in a position of being held high above the ground is actually unstable. In other words, the apple, you know, really wants to fall down, but something's holding it up. When the apple hits the ground and the apple remains on the ground, it's in a much more stable state than when it was when it was above the ground. And this is why the apple falls, because systems tend to change in such a way as to lower their potential energy. So 
the same idea can be encountered chemically. So suppose you're driving a car, right? So this is my car. And I'm just going to say that this little shaded part of the car is the gas tank. Now the molecules that are in the gas tank, the molecules that compose your gas in your car, have a high chemical potential energy associated with their composition. It mostly has to do with the interactions of the charged particles within the molecules. Certain arrangements of molecules have a higher potential energy than other arrangements of molecules. Therefore, when the energy burns, or excuse me, when the, when the fuel burns, it gives off exhaust, and the energy, the potential energy of the fuel has a much is a, is a much higher potential energy than the energy of the, the potential energy of the exhaust. And this is why the energy can be used to move the car forward and do work. Now that's all fine and great that the combustion of this fuel can move the car forward, but the truth of the matter is only a very, very small portion of the energy that's given off by this reaction is accessible to do work and move the car forward. Most of this energy is converted to thermal energy and is lost as heat. That jagged line represents heat. So a very, very small portion of the energy that is given off by this reaction in burning the fuel can be actually harnessed to do work and move the car forward. Now certainly there are certain engines that have a better efficiency than others. There are certain engines that can have a, you know, can, can use more of their energy to move the car forward than others, but for the most part the energy is lost as heat. So that's sort of a chemical description of potential and kinetic energy. So that just about wraps up this lesson, so I hope it was helpful.